Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some smaller test type questions, test questions that could be of a size that could fit into multiple choice type questions. So we have here a company's old machine that cost 52000 had an accumulated depreciation of 40800 was traded on a new machine having an estimated 20 year life with an invoice price of 63200 The co company also paid 53800 cash along with its old machine to acquire the new machine. If this transaction has commercial substance, the new machine should be recorded at what? So you could get, the, it's easy to get this confused with the rules basically for GAAP and rules for the tax code. The tax code, you might have a, some kind of like kind exchange. Here, we're just going to put the new machine on the books at the cost of the new machine, basically. And we're going to have to take off the old machine and see if there's any difference. So let's try to record this transaction. I like to think of it as a, basically a journal entry. So, uh, I'm going to build the journal entry. I'm not going to put the debits on top and the credits on the bottom because I'm just going to try to build it with what I know best and and put the debits and credits where they land in that order. So first thing I usually ask is cash affected. And we know that uh, the company paid cash 53800 So I know cash uh, then is going to go down. Cash is an asset. It has a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite, which is a credit. I'm going to represent credits with a negative number. Therefore, we got 53800 so that, I know that happened for sure. Uh, the company sold its old machine here. So the machine cost 52000 So it went on the books at 52000 It didn't go down directly. Accumulated depreciation is going to go down. Therefore, the machine is still on our books at 52000 And it's got to go away because we're getting rid of it. It's an asset. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. So the machine, and we'll call it old machine. So we can distinguish it from the new machine that we will be putting on. It's going to have to be a credit of 52000 Okay, but there's going to be accumulated depreciation related to it, to, to, the, to the old machine, right? So we got to take that off the books. Whatever depreciation is related to it in that separate account, it's a credit balance account. It's a contra asset account. We need to make it go down. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which would be a debit. So the accumulated depreciation was 40800 so the book value of the machine was this 52 minus the 40,800 or 11,200. That's the value of the machine that we had left on the books. Now, what did we buy? We got a new machine. We got a new machine and we traded in this old machine, which cost 11,000. We're going to put the new machine on the books at the price, the sticker price, assuming that's a fair price. So this, we got the new machine goes on the books and it's an asset so we're going to put it on the books at the cost which in this case they're saying is 63200 and uh and they also pay cash so that's that's everything that happened we paid cash we we gave them the old machine which has a value of to us 11200 and we acquired the new machine so now if we added up our debits and credits we add up the debits and we add up the credits equals the sum. I'm just going to add up the credits here. We have a difference, of course, here, and the difference is going to be this minus this, meaning that the credits are beating the debits by that 1,800, meaning we need another debit. So we need another debit. I'm going to do that with my like plug formula. I'm going to say this is the negative sum of these. So notice these are negative credits, and these are positive debits, and therefore it's going to take the difference and flip the sign to the plug. So that now if I add up my debits and credits, they add up to zero and they add up to zero here. So that's the plug we need to make this work. And the question is, what account would that go to? And uh, if if we did this transaction, it's either going to be a gain or a loss. We made a sale here and, and we got compensation for it. And that compensation being in the form of, uh, of, of cash in a new machine. So in this case, it's going to be a loss on the sale because uh, because it's a debit and debits if we're on the income statements are kind of like expenses expenses bringing the uh, net income down so depending on what on what they ask for the new machine is going to go on the books at this time at the 30 62 63 200 remember this isn't the tax code this is going to be uh, this is generally accepted accounting the, the, the accounting and then we're going to have a loss on the exchange of this 1800 Next one says that a company owns equipment that costs 100700 with accumulated depreciation of 68800 Company asks 36800 for the equipment but sells the equipment for 34200 Compute the amount of gain or loss on sale. So I tend to think about these in terms of journal entries. So I'm going to work out the journal entry. So we're going to say that there was a sale that happened. So is cash affected? I'm going to say, yeah, we got cash. Cash is affected. Cash is an asset. It's going to go up with a debit. 
and the company asked for 60, uh, 36 eight. That's like the starting price, but it actually got uh, 34,200. So of course that's the number we're going to use, the number that we actually uh, got uh, on the transaction. So that's the cash. And then we're going to take the equipment off the books. So equipment has got to go off the books. It's an asset. We're going to take it off the books by doing the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. Assets have debits. We're going to credit it to make it go down. So remember, it's on the books with two accounts. It's on the books with an asset account and a contra asset account, the equipment account and the accumulated depreciation account. So we're going to put the equipment account. We're going to take off the books for the seven one hundred thousand seven, And then we're going to take the accumulated depreciation which I'm going to abbreviate, has to go off the books. It's a contrasted account, meaning it has a credit balance. We need to do the opposite to take it off the books. Therefore, we're going to debit it 68800 And then we look at what the difference is again. So if we add up the debits, they add up to this. And if we add up the credits, they add up to, of course, this. And then if we take the difference between the debits and the credits, we, we can then see that I'm going to add them because there's one's a net positive and one's a net we could see that we have a difference of 2,300. In this case, the debits are winning. Therefore, we need a credit to balance this out. So we need a credit over here. I'm going to do this with our uh, negative sum function, our plug function, which is a negative sum, meaning I want to take the debits or positive numbers minus the credits or negative numbers the way they formatted here and then flip the sign. And that'll give us our plug, putting us back in balance in this case. And then the only question is, well, what should that amount be? And in this case, it's a credit. It's going to be on the income statement. So this is going to be a gain on sale. Why is it a gain on sale? Because, of course, we got cash of the 34.2. And the equipment has a book value of this minus this, which is the 31.9. So 34.2 minus the 31.9 means we got more cash than it was on our books for, resulting in the gain that's going to have to go on the income statement. Next one says that a company installs a ma uh, manufacturing machine in its production faculty facility at the beginning of the year at a cost of 154000 The machine's useful life is estimated to be five years or 370,000 units of product. Uh, with a 6,000 salvage value, during its second year, the machine produced 59,200 units of product. Determine the machine's second year of depreciation under the units of production method. All right, so we're going to use the units of production method. Therefore, they gave us, once again, some information that's not entirely needed, meaning they gave us the number of years. We're not measuring in the number of years in this case. We are measuring in the usage. That's what we're going to use to drive the measuring. So we're going to start as we would with all uh, of our depreciation methods, generally with the cost. The cost being, in this case, 154000 We will take out the salvage, the amount that will be... Uh, the value of the machine after the useful life, meaning after it's printed this many units of product. Going to go ahead and go to the Home tab, Font, Group, and underline that. Subtract this out. We're going to say this is the 154,000 minus the 6,000 gives us the 148, the amount to be depreciated. So now we need to figure out the uh, amount per unit. How much does it cost per unit? So the, uh, the amount per unit, we need to have the total units to be produced. So the total units that could be produced uh, are 370,000 units. So we're not going to take the five years. We're going to measure it in terms of units. If we divide that out, we're going to say this is the 148,000 cost divided by the number of units that we think can be produced over the useful life of this. And that will give us, if we go to the home tab, numbers group, and increase, about 40 cents per unit. So this is the cost per unit or depreciation per unit that we will charge. Then all we need to do is count the units. And again, we'd have to count the units. That's the problem with this type of method over just using time, like a year. It's easy to know that a year has passed. If we're using units, we need to count the number of units that have passed within the year. And in this case, we're just looking at year two. So in uh, second year, the, the units produced in year two would be this 59.2 and that's going to be then equal to the cost per unit times the 59.2 uh, units produced. And this is the DPRE expense for year two. Next one says that an asset's book value is 64,800 on January 1st, year six. The asset is being depreciated 9,900 per month 
using the straight line cost method, assuming the asset is sold on July 1st, year 7, for 46600 the company should record what? Now, I'm going to think about this in terms of a journal entry, that we're going to have a journal entry on there, and I'll record what we have. And the, a multiple choice question could ask you for any piece of the journal entry. They could say, well, should this be debited or that be credited? I would write out the entire journal entry if possible. That'll help you to uh, stop making mistakes or, or reduce the likelihood of making mistakes by debiting when you should have credited and whatnot like that. So I'm going to say uh, first is cash affected and it was sold for the 46,600. We sold it. Therefore, we got the cash. So I'm going to say cash is going to go up by the 46,600. So that much we know. We know that the equipment's got to go off the books. So whatever the asset is, it's a fixed asset of equipment. It's going to have to go off the books. And then we're going to have to account for the accumulated depreciation. Depre. All right, so the, we have the asset has a book value, so we don't really know what that book value means. It, it's it's We don't know what the cost is versus the accumulated depreciation. But as of that point in time, I'm kind of, I'm going to treat that as kind of like the cost at that point in time. And so I'm going to say it has a cost at this point of the 64800 And then we're going to have to calculate the added depreciation that's going to take place from July or January of year 6 to... Uh, July of year seven and they gave us the monthly depreciation on that so if we're saying it's 900 a month and we of course had uh, 12 months in year six and then how many months in year seven it happened in July which is month number seven but note that it's in July 1st therefore it we're actually going through June so January February March April May June if we count it out on our fingers not July because July 1st is what we're talking about so it could, and that's, and they could completely try to confuse you by doing that instead of saying June 30th or they say July 1st. So we're going to take, it's going to be equal to the 12 months in the first year, in year six and then uh, another six months in year seven. So we're talking 18 more months of depreciation. So we've got 9,000 times 18 more months. That's the added accumulated depreciation over this book value. So that's the asset. Let's say original book value and we'll group those two together we don't know the breakout between the book and the, and the asset but we know that the accumulated depreciation added that we're going to have to take off the books now because it would have uh, accumulated upwards accumulated depreciation has a credit balance we're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it we're going to debit it by that uh, 16,200 and then of course if we look at the debits and credits now we can see that whether the debits and credits are equal and of course they most likely will be not and we're going to say the difference between the debits and credits then is 2000 looks like that should be a debit i'm going to plug that in with our negative sum function our plug formula negative sum meaning that i want to take the debits positive numbers minus the credits negative numbers then flip the sign giving us the plug that we need in order to put this in balance then the only question is what should that account be and in this case, it's going to be a loss on sale. Why is it a loss? Well, one, it's going to be on the income statement, and it's a debit, and that would indicate that uh, it's kind of like an expense, going to decrease net income. It's a loss. Also, we can say, well, the book value now is the book value at the beginning plus the added accumulated depreciation or minus the added accumulated depreciation means that the book value is 48600 and we sold it for 46600 so we sold it for less than we currently had it on the books for by the 2000. Therefore, we have a loss that will have to be recorded on the income statement.